Hey, it's Zach Vegas from Ghost Adventures, and you're watching The Search Existence Unknown. in early American medicine was a study on mental disorders such as schizophrenia. Practices like electroshock therapy, insulin treatments, which would put the patient into a coma. St. Albans was one of the locations for these types of practices as well as new techniques over the years to improve mental disorders. But before St. Albans became a sanatorium, George Mills just received a large donation of land from Gabriel C. Warden of the Confederate Army. With it, he proceeded to build one of the most respected and prestigious boys' school in the nation. The school prospered in the following years and even survived during the stock market crash of 1893. St. Albans gained a reputation for its powerful baseball and football teams. So great was their reputation for success that almost every school of Virginia refused to play them. The atmosphere at the school was rough and competitive. The stronger boys were favored and the weak were bullied harshly. My name is Chris Magger and I'm on a personal mission to find the truth. Hello? I'm joined by my good friend Patrick Shields. Let's just say something. Bullshit. Jake Stock. I feel like someone's touching my neck. What? I feel like someone's touching my neck. And Rick White. I got it right up this area right here, right here. Together, we explore claims of supernatural activity. No matter what we encounter, we will continue our search for the existence of unknown. After sitting for so many years, St. Albans waits to tell her story from within her walls. Sitting just outside of the skirts of Radford, Virginia, overlooking the New River. After closing in 1911, St. Albans didn't see its end. The early 20th century marked the beginning of psychiatry as a true medical practice with doctors not only observing patients, but performing experimental and risky procedures. In 1916, Dr. J.C. King converted St. Albans from a boys' school to a hospital for mentally ill. Even though the treatment of mental disorders at St. Albans was far superior to the care given to lunatics at other facilities, many patients succumbed as a result of experimental treatments performed at this institution. Insulin coma therapy, also known as ICT, electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, and hydroshock therapy, HST, all resulted in a significant number of fatalities. All right, we made a long trip. We just got here. We're at St. Albans Sanatorium in Radford, Virginia. Well, it is my birthday, and we're investigating here at St. Albans. This place is pretty wild. It's pretty wicked looking. Hall about a quarter of midnight. It looked like fog because the whole hallway was covered. As soon as it passed, black mist came down. It. And 
you could see what appeared to be one or two shadow figures standing at the end of the hall. Now this is original. There was two of them where they would actually strap the more violent ones down while they was either waiting or when they came out from electroshock. <coughs> In here, there's something black that crawls on the floor. You also see whatever the black thing is crawling on the floor in a bowling alley. Now I'm gonna tell you guys something. Now, this place is pretty awesome looking. It's pretty crazy looking. I can't wait to get in there tonight and find out what we get or what's going on in there. Has the memories of the past from the boys' school implanted themselves within the walls of St. Albans, creating an everlasting aggressive energy? Does St. Albans still hold patients that lost their lives from the risky procedures performed on them during its time when it was opened as a fully operational sanatorium? Well, here we are, man, and we're gonna have a good time, so watch out. You never know what we'll find. Before we started our investigation, we set up four static cams. First, electroshock therapy to cover the claims of a crawling shadow figure. Two, the grand staircase for the claims of a small child walking the halls. Third, psych ward for the claims of an ex-patient and nurse that still takes her rounds. This? Yeah. And fourth, we set up down in the rec room, which is also known as the dragon room. We set up these boards because earlier, when we was walking around with Chuck, these boards did fall over. So we're trying to recreate something, trying to see if it'll happen again. Should I look into it and tell it what time it is? Should I tell it what time it is? Yeah. 7.50, about 7.50. Using beep, you're upstairs? Yeah, we actually beep at the same time. Oh, wow, that's yeah. trippy. That's cool. That's trippy. All right, here we go, man, St. Albans. And we got Matt Cousine with us. because we're looking at each other, man. Go for it. Huh? All right, guys. As you can see, a door open. That's the only light we have in this building right now. Literally, this place is dark. And it's freezing. Uh, Matt's been here before. Our great producer of Paranormal Reality TV. Thank you, Matt, for filming, dude. Glad you guys can make it up here. Dude, it's awesome to have you here. This should, this should be good. This is the last time we investigated with you is at Waverly Hills. That's true. Seeing that earlier, huh? I don't remember seeing this. Part. We never went up here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Already, before the investigation really got started, we captured what sounded like a small child or a woman trying to contact us. Hello? 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 Dude, what the hell? This battery's just gone. What? Really? Yeah. What'd you say? The battery's just dead. On what? I don't know. On this camera? Yeah. It just said 137. Now it's flashing. It's dead already? Yeah. Do we got a spare battery? I got one in my pocket. We lost a lot in here when we were up here. I mean, it was full. Alright guys, hold on, let's get this battery changed. Is it one of the old ones, Pat? No, this shouldn't be any old ones. What does it say? Say I does it say memory? While Jake was putting a new battery on the camera, Rick and Matt heard a voice, a very deep voice, from the other room. And you can see that Rick, Matt, Jake, and myself were in front of the camera, which Pat is holding. Where this deep voice came from, we could not figure it out. Say, I, does it say memory? Next thing we're going to do, we normally don't, is we're going to slow the audio down by 20% and go up 4 decibels so you can try to understand or try to hear more of what we're talking about of this voice talking over Jake. Okay. Got the battery changed. Yeah, awesome. Residue, I heard something. It was like, sure it wasn't a stomach. I mean, it kind of sounded like a stomach. It wasn't mine. I thought it was for a stomach or something. I don't know. A what? Oh, that's actually good. Ooh. Like Someone leading us in this room. Hello? This is the floor where they heard the speaker come on. Somewhere on this floor there's a speaker that doesn't have any wires to it and we've heard calls for doctors. Well, this doesn't give you the creep factor. I don't know what does. Yeah. Hello? <clears throat> Any 
patients. Is that someone's stomach? That's probably walking. Jake, were you walking? I was not. Oh, he's standing oh, okay. in front of yeah. me. <clears throat> that was me playing. Someone say, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Chris did. You guys whispering down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear paper? I heard whispering I heard like whispering. you guys were talking. Oh, I just whispered right now. Yeah, that was us whispering, but we heard paper. I mean, it feels cold. There's got to be an open window, right? Right. There probably is. It gets colder down here. Uh, what the hell made that paper noise? Uh, this window's boarded, but not completely sealed. Where the hell's paper? Here we go. Is there paper in there? Oh, yep. There you go. It is. Debunked, guys. Well, see, we heard paper. And that's what it was. Windows wide open. Wind's blowing us back and forth. Well, dismisses that. After dismissing the paper sound and investigating the second floor for another hour, it seemed like the activity just stopped. With no more to explore, we began our way up to the third floor, which is known for its suicides. On these steps up here, they were walking uh, a tour group in right before we got up here. It was during the, I think it was in the evening. Some guy got basically dragged down the steps and passed out cold, and they had to take him outside. He was just out cold. You good? This is the axe room in here. The axe room? Yeah, somebody chopped out all the walls. And they claimed that they had an axe that would be Show up in different fire alarm. Places around the middle of the floor. That's weird. There's actually something here left behind. Can you uh, come and explain to us who you are? What you are? And where you're at? At this time, we didn't know we captured what sounded like someone saying no to my questions, someone being resistant. What you are, and where you're at. Just like all investigations, most of the time you never hear anything for hours without review of the audio or video equipment, and that is what seems to be happening now. With more to explore at State Albums, we decided to head downstairs, which we would hear with our own ears something that we could not figure out. The stairs we need is right here. Where you at, Matt? Right here. Where? Right here. Right, you gotta go back this way. Chair, really, this is all the way down. Got all the way back there. That was me. 
Hello? Walk a couple steps. Come on down, Rick. I'm gonna listen to the stairs. stairs that is causing the strange sound we still captured again what sounded like a woman I don't know man person I don't know man person I don't know man person that's got to be the stairs on here and then Hearing like almost like a female voice. That's what I thought I heard too. This is where we heard that earlier. So I don't know if that's why I was asking. Hey, why don't you kind of like go down the steps? Because it has it. I don't know if it's because of the stairs, the squeakiness in the wood. We heard a, a female top voice in here. And none of us were on the steps earlier. Oh, that's when we were uh, yeah, setting up. Set, yeah, setting up the cameras. Hello. Ma'am? With no explanation to the strange woman type sound we just heard, we began our way to what is known as the worst of the worst wing, where they kept a more aggressive patience. What are we looking for? Down here, they kept the bad boys down here, the worst of the worst. We're just gonna give them some shit, I can tell. In the hell's the badasses? Hello, ladies. Remember I said I wish that door wasn't locked? So yeah. I could see what's in there? Hello? And as I'm talking about this door that I wanted to investigate earlier, why it was closed and locked, you hear somebody responding to what I'm talking about. Remember I said I wish that door wasn't locked? So yeah. I could see what's in there? Hello? Remember I said I wish that door wasn't locked? So yeah. I could see what's in there? At this time of the night, we decided to start the second phase of our investigation, where we split up into two teams. Pat and I would start off on the first floor of the main building as Jake and Rick, with Matt, investigated the basement area known as the Dragon Room.
Still open. open. Yeah. Just so everybody know we got the PX going. Awesome. Right here. Let's creep up a little bit, man. Burglary. What? Burglary. Burglary. No, we're not burglars. That chime at, dude. That was, uh, that was upstairs. That was on the next floor up. Yeah, it was above us. Earlier, when all of us was on the third floor of the main building, we found it strange that the wind chimes was hanging in this room for no apparent reason that has been called the suicide room. Could this be what Pat and I just heard as we began our portion of the second phase? Yeah. Of uh, shit, my battery. What? My battery. On what? On recording. No. Got any on you? Any on you to change them? No. Can you, the, uh, can you move that chime there? That was me. That? Uh huh? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I said, oh. Damn, I got excited. Chuck says you like rock and roll music. Is that true? I think rock and roll sucked. What do you think about that? What light was that? I don't know. I thought that was you. Whoa. This next EVP is actually what we call a disembodied voice that is heard with our very own ears as well captured on our voice recorders. I think you're a coward then. Got no reason to be afraid of us. We're just trying to talk. What light was that? I don't know. I thought that was you. Whoa. The light just went off. What light was that? I don't know. I thought that was you. Whoa. The light just went off. What light was that? I don't know. I thought that was you. Whoa. Picked it up. Did you hear it? Well, he yeah. definitely picked it up because if I didn't hear it, three. I don't know if I heard it with my own ears or if I heard it through your headphones. I definitely heard it. Yeah, you can hear it. can do that. Did you do it a little bit ago? What?
As Pat and I examine the suicide room where the wind chimes are hanging, I hear on my voice recorder something that sounds like someone saying what, but could not be for sure, as we try to dismiss with many different factors, leaving it as unknown. So anything or anybody up here can do that? Did you do it a little bit ago? What? So anything or anybody up here can do that? Did you do it a little bit ago? What? So anything or anybody up here can do that? Did you do it a little bit ago? What? You didn't say what? I said anything. Really? No, not that. I heard that. This is the room where there was suicide. Well, if you don't do it again, we're going to have to leave. We'll go find one of your friends and talk to them. We're going to count to three and you make the loudest sound you can. One, two, three. With nothing else responding to Matt, Jake, and Rick, they begin to make their way back up to the main floors to meet up with Pat and I. What the fuck that the do means? The what? We always hear that on the freaking PI. It's like, it's like the do or some shit. Yeah. Not do. Forward. We're That's, going forward. That's where we're going. Saturn. Is that where you're from? No, wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. We're actually talking to aliens. Through this. Yeah. Eat, huh? You hungry? Eat. Eat. Eat horror's country. Hmm. There were mental patients here. Yeah. The horses may have been normal. I'd do it. Did you hear that? Now this next EVP, which again is a disembodied voice, we believe is responding to Pat's humor about being crazy. Almost like they weren't happy with Pat's humor. And this voice almost sounds like the very same one we heard earlier up on the main floor with all of us. Of course, may have been normal. I do it. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Dude. What'd you hear? Some dude talking. Yeah. I heard that. You did I could say it? come on or something. Matt? Quarter. So did I. Hey. No, it did not just say that. The strange thing about this coming through the PX device is that the word retards is not part of the database dictionary. Quarter. So did I. Hey. 
No, it did not just say that. Quarter. So the No, it did not just say that. Quarter. So the No, it did not just say that. This time, the PX mentions a name, Jim Burns. Is this the full name of a former patient or somebody named Jim Burned? We could not find any documentation on either case. Did that make you sound? No. Did that make you sound? No. Did that make you sound? No. As Pat and I finally made our way down to the basement area, we began investigating the bowling alley in the boiler room. We didn't find anything to the claims of a dark mass in the bowling alley, but as Pat and I continued our investigation into the boiler room, Rick, Matt, and Jake meet up with us, and we begin to help Matt figure out a mystery that he witnessed with his crew, Ghost Band, when they investigated there before, and it seemed like someone was looking at him through the boiler room window. You guys down here? Yeah, we're right here. So, uh, close that door for a second. Hey, Chris, could you do me a favor and go on the other side of the door and look through the window and let's see if Jake can see you? All right. Let's do the same thing. Like right here? Yeah, it was like from here we walked on. You see anything in the window? Yeah, I can see him. You can see him? Yeah. Pat, move your camera away from his face. There you go. Yeah, I can I can see him moving. See him That's in there? exactly what it looked like. Okay, Chris. What? Y'all come out here for a second. I just want to see Jake. Like we had, like basically, it was Joey was in the front. He had a camera. He was walking up towards the door, and it looked just like what you just saw right there with someone looking out. Yeah. So what I'm looking saying, for? So just walk up here by yourself, Jake, and see if you see your own reflection. Without getting the IR beam into it? Yeah, I see something. Yeah, I do. Yeah. See that? Where? Yeah. Pat, move your camera. That's see it. That looks like someone looking at you. Yeah, that's exactly what we saw. But it's just me. It is? Are you sure? Oh, yeah, look at it, dude. Move your head and see if it moves. Here. Yeah, is that something inside there? No, that's Jake. It's yeah, because I can see Jake's reflection. It's the camera. Yeah. Wait, wait, I want to see it. It's Jake. Again, like before, we captured on our audio another male voice trying to talk with us, like he's trying to figure out what we are doing. Yeah, because I can see Jake's reflection. It's the camera. Yeah. Wait, wait, I want to see it. It's Jake. It's yeah, because I can see Jake's reflection. It's the camera. Yeah. Wait, wait, I don't see it. It's Jake. Yeah, because I can see Jake's reflection. It's the camera. Yeah. Wait, wait, I don't see it. It's Jake. Turn your head to the yeah, left. Bro. Yeah, it's not moving yeah, at all. Right next to you. We can go warm up real quick. Right. Yeah, that's his, uh... As time got closer to the early morning, Rick and myself decided to get warmed up for a while. As Matt, Jake, and Pat try to find out what they experienced earlier during setup with the sound of a woman crying, and it seems they find exactly what they're looking for. I said, do we need to go up? It sounded like a voice to me. It sounded like a man or something. Couldn't quite tell. It sounded like a voice though. Never really fit. You want me echoing? Could have been. Could, Could have been. been. Yeah. Echo, echo. It could have been you and Chris echoing at the same time. My battery's dead. Really? It's dying. Just dead. You can't even. Just had 106 minutes. Where are you? You draining these batteries? It's flashing, yeah. No way. 
I'm not, I'm not a firm believer in these things can just drain batteries, but I think it has to do with what you're using using that hot shoe. The hot shoe does drain. Did you hear that? Was it thing down there? I didn't hear Chris! That. Did you just like yell or something? Huh? Did you did you just say something down there? Yeah. You're dead. Correct. You weren't like, uh is that what you heard? I heard it, but it was coming from up there is what it sounded like to me. What was that? I heard it again. You know what that sounded like through my headphones? What? A whistle. Really? Yeah. You see how it echoes, so it's got that reverb, it kind of sounds like it's whistling back. The first time I heard something, it sounded like somebody talking upstairs. Are you trying to talk? I'm actually getting a little bit of cold chills. Were you yelling? What the fuck was that? Could this be the same woman we have been hearing throughout the night? And what is she trying to tell us? Why is she so sad? What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? St. Albans truly has surprised us with the audio tidal wave of data that we captured. With the same grumpy man talking to us throughout the night, the same woman crying out, following Matt, Jake, and Pat throughout the building, it truly seems that Sadie Albans has so many stories within her walls to tell. And the lost souls that fell to the experiments on mental health are looking for help and still reaching out to share with us their stories.